All right. So, um, hey, Cal, so, you know, while we wait for some of the other folks to join in, um, join back in, do you have any specific questions so far? Um, not yet. Not yet? All right. All right. It looks like we might have gotten a new person as well. Uh, is that Robbie? All right, we've got Natalia back and Gary. Mm -hmm. All right, and Jack. So um, maybe we'll get John up. Oh, there's John. Oh, we lost Robbie. Okay, well, hopefully he'll rejoin. All right, so welcome back, everybody. So, um, Jack, I, you know, I didn't want to cut you off. So by all means, if, uh, if there was anything else that you wanted to, to cover, we can certainly do that. Actually, as we went off, there was one more thing okay. that was a lot of fun. And I'm still working on is this elbow joint here? It has this cam built in. So it's gonna see if it, if you there's this little piece here that you can move. Yeah, a little cam that he's holding up. And if you slide it around and, and it's got a little slots, so you can put it so it's in a slot, and then you move it, it adjusts the um the rate of tension on this string. And so I can move it down or up, and, and basically it changes the diameter of the string going over at the elbow. And the reason is, is that this string is going to um, the fingers and this string is going to the thumb. And so this allows you to adjust the, um, the thumb and fingers separately, the user pretty quickly and easily, so that they can have various grips, various grip styles. So they can go from a, from a pincer grip to a big grip just by adjusting these cams, right? And they just slide and, in, into different slots. So that was a lot of fun. Um, some feedback I got from a couple of recipients really liked it and it was just a lot of fun. I, I wanna keep improving that idea um, because I know a lot of recipients are, are adjusting their screws every time they get in there and they'll adjust the screws for a different, I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Um, um, it's nice to be able to do this with an elbow because I have this big elbow area that you can really do this stuff. On a hand, I couldn't come up with any good idea for that, but, but on an arm, you've got a lot of area in this elbow to design a lot of things that could, um, could, could make it variable adjustment so you can get different grips pretty easily. You know what, hey, hey Jack, I, I feel like we need, to, we, need to be, we need to be talking about that more. So I don't know if, it, I don't know if it's a Google Plus post, multiple Google Plus posts, but to be, to be frank, I don't think I even knew that. <laughs> and you're work. making it and you're like, what does this piece do? Yeah, I'm like, this is really cool. No, I, I intuitively understood that it had something to do with it, but I didn't, right. and I knew there was two of them, but I right. never would have guessed that you could adjust them independently in order to change the grip. Right. So, um, you know, that's almost maybe even worth on the Thingiverse page. You know, I know that you were having some, was it you? Yeah, you were having some issues even commenting on it. But yeah, I can't even comment on my own design on Thingiverse. Yeah. I, love it. <laughs> I mean, is there some way for you to like highlight maybe in the first three lines, like, you right, know, right. hands for grip adjustment, you know, the, the 3D printed bolts instead of having to buy them. I think that's right, huge right. as well. And then the, uh, the multiple segments so that regardless of the size of your printer, because that's always been a limitation, oftentimes right, even right. with the unlimited. You know, when that right. came out, that was one of the first things that people started asking is how do I print this in, you know, on a small printer. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I, I should. Um, uh, so I'm about to post a new design. I'll, I'll readjust all that. In my first post, you know, I just wanted to make sure I gave creds to Christian and Steve right off the top. And I'll, I'll keep that there, but then made very quickly get into the, the, the differences. Cool. Um, um, and there were going to be several more on the next <clears throat> post I made. I'll include a cover. A lot of people have asked for a cover. Again, back to the natural looking design. They want the cover. Um, and, um, and the other thing I'm working on is making increasing grip strength. Um, it's a big deal. I know Eric has done a lot of research in grip strength. And, um, and so I, got, I made one of his little, you know, cuff, cuff uh, based uh, grip strength measurers. And, um, and I have several ideas for, for adjusting grip strength. And, and sort of feedback from this group, adjusting grip strength is gonna make stringing even more complicated. Because the way I'm adjusting grip strength is I'm gonna run strings back and forth. So think of a block and tackle type mechanism, right? So um, it's gonna be the strings running back and forth up these fingers sort of twice or three times. 
and, and, and just like a block and tackle, it's going to increase your grip strength. Yeah. Um, the problem is then the range, but so that'll make this elbow bigger. So I, because you're by, by, by making the strength tighter, I need bigger range of motion of the string itself. But again, I got this big elbow to work with. So this circle will get bigger and this grip strength will get a lot stronger. As I know, that's another big complaint, you know, yeah, it's one of those, like uh, 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 yeah, it's one of those things that, that, depending on who you talk to, they're like, yeah, I can pick up an empty water bottle, but not a full one sort of thing. <laughs> and so, and so I'm like, I should be able to pick up a full, you know, standard water bottle, you know, with, with, with a design. And I think it can achieve that. Excellent. Well then, um, thank you, Jack, uh, sincerely. Um, you know, I, I think it's amazing when, uh, you know, somebody comes in and starts making some adjustments and it catches on and, and uh, really makes an impact. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. I'm just doing it for fun. <laughs> so um, well, it's, fun for, it's also entertaining. So it's fun for more than you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's, um, let's move into some questions and answers. So uh, if anybody has any questions for Jack in particular, let's, let's start with those. And then uh, we can kind of transition into just general questions and We've got enough people here to provide some good answers. So any questions for Jack? Yeah. Yeah, I would like to ask one question. Hi, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Please do. Okay. Uh, so Jack, uh, uh, I just joined your meeting, uh, the meeting right now. Sorry for being late. But as far as the testing is concerned on patients and on uh, recipients, so uh, what's the response of and how, what functionality has these hands uh, being able to provide to the recipients at the end of the day and what functions are they able to do. So that's the main thing which uh, is required because we have to compromise somewhere between cosmetics and somewhere between functionality. Yeah, so, so I didn't have a sponsor, certainly not a medical or university sponsor. Um, Eric Burbar, who I work with, does, is at Marymount University. Um, I don't know if you're in the US or not, but man, I wanted to avoid anything to do with an IRB, right? So for God's sakes, if I had to do anything that required an IRB, I probably wouldn't do it, right? Um, not because they're bad, not because I don't believe in them, but because they're not a fit for what I'm doing. And um, remind us, what is an IRB? Oh, uh, internal review board. So if you're making a medical thing or doing a medical test, um, a, a, a scientific test of a medical nature um, and you're at a major university in the US you have to go through an internal review board and that internal review board is basically looking for primarily ethics violations right and and for if you're testing a new drug or if you're testing some major medical test or device an IRB makes lots of sense um, but in a lot of cases they get way out of hand uh, no pun intended but um, in that you know, they, they want to know that every person you test this on realizes this is a test device. Um, you're not making any promises, yada, yada, yada. Um, they need to review all that paperwork that you're signing, they're signing, you're signing. And so it gets really complicated really fast. And, and you know, if you're doing a drug or, or something, uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, and, and I think if I were to do a, a true university-based test on one of these devices, it would be required at a university. And um, I, I just didn't want to mess with it. But if somebody else, if somebody else wanted to mess with it at a university, you know, I, I, um, and, and I only throw Eric Berber under the bus because I know him and he's at a university. If he wanted to do it, I would say, fine, I'll help you, I'll support you. You deal with the IRB and I'll make the designs and, and, and however you want them. Um, so to, to Robbie's question, have, have you, did you do any informal testing or, or uh, recipient testing to kind of get a sense of the functionality that delivered? So all of it was done remotely. So I could not find a recipient, an adult recipient local to me for this arm. Right. So it was all done remotely um, with other recipients um, and other um, prostheses, right? Feedback from other people who make prostheses and what they wanted. And then talking with people um, online in um, the developing world and saying, well, what do you need? What, is the, what does the design not have for you? What, what, what features do you need modified in this design? 
And, and it's another reason why I started with Christian Silva's design. I didn't want to go backwards. I didn't want to take anything away from his design. So can you review with us who you were collaborating with remotely and how did you take, do you have any sort of records of the feedback you were getting and so on? I mean, you, whether you went through an IRB or not, you've done an interesting bit of uh, research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's all. Mostly uh, all in my head and a few informal emails. Yeah, I mean, Ishmael and Ghana, right, who I met through Joe's board and, um, um, and then the guys in um, where another another place in Africa, just an email saying, "Hey, what do you, you know?" Uh, um, they put out their um, review of what they liked or didn't like, read it, and just emailed and said, "Hey, can you give me a little bit more feedback? A little more detail." Um, all of it was of that type. Um, emails specifically to people um, who had either made posts on the Google Plus site that I thought were interesting got their email directly or just through the Google plus site. But you know, when I really wanted to get down in the weeds, I'd try and call them and, and talk through it. So, so I um, had no, no local recipient that I could go try this out on. Right. Yeah. So yeah. R Robbie, I don't know. Did you, was your question specific to this device or do you, was your question sort of general in terms of what functionality we, a recipient can expect? Yeah. These or yeah, you just want a list of the added functionality that, that, that I came up with for this design? Yeah, basically the first thing is uh, the functionality because uh, so I am in Pakistan over here right now. So uh, we have been dealing with patients uh, by the end of the day. So uh, because we know these 3D printed prosthetics are not primarily for cosmetic use. Mm -hmm. so, so the main purpose that uh, we are trying to provide to the kids over here so they can at least do some of the basic life work or picking, placing, packing. So I was just curious to know if this, if it would, is any added advantage uh, uh, beside Phoenix uh, or Flexi Hand, which is providing as far as functionality was concerned, testing on recipients. Yeah, I mean, probably not from like a a day to day perspective. I mean, Robbie, I think you and I were talking over email, and you're looking for like hardcore functionality, right? The ability to 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 do things like real things with this. Yeah. And um, I, I mean, I, I think that it's, it's, it, it's no, maybe no more or less functional than the Phoenix hand. But you know, at the end of the day, I don't know that this device would allow you to go out for example, and, and do a day's work. Mm. Right. But, yeah. John, do you have an opinion on that? No, I have no opinion on that hand. Um, yeah. But I've become a fanatic about this new one moving part gripper hand. And I'd like to find out more, um, Jack, about how to adapt the gripper hand so you can socket it right into your arm and yeah. see how that goes. Um, it's a much simpler hand, um, Robbie, but I think it's much more robust. Yeah. And it really holds on to things in a, in a very simple and robust way. Yeah, Robbie, I think that was, did I send you that link? Maybe just yesterday or something. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I have printed that gripper hand, which is just move its, its uh, thumb. Yeah, so I just printed a few days back, so it's working. Uh, it's much better as far as the functionality is concerned. Basically, it will be providing you some of the uh, gripping things. So, yeah, agreed upon that. Yeah, we were just, I would agree the same. Um, the gripper thumb, I really liked it. I remember when um, Skip first posted it, and I was like, Skip, I I want to get on that and if I had more free time, I would, I would love to integrate that um, with this. There's no reason why I can't reverse, you know, it's a little different, right? Cause now closing pulls or, or you can go over the top. So opening opens, um, it, it's totally feasible. Um, and we were just talking yesterday about the inadequacy of like the, the unlimited arm for that, uh, that gripper in terms of the socket and the strength. So this looks a lot more appropriate. Yeah, yeah. I, I worked on with, um, I, there's a post on the Google Plus site as well of the, um, I forgot it already. What's it called? I forgot the name already. Of this arm that I also designed, um, which has the total socket design. So this is similar in that it's a, it's a full socket and, and it has a, uh, um, an adjustable wrist. So not to completely go into a total different design for this. This is a total another design 
that I did along with um, Jeff. And um, it was really his idea. Jeff said, I want this design. Can you make it for me? And I said, sure. And um, um, this is not natural looking in the hand, but there's no reason why I couldn't put the flexi hand on this arm, right? With a, with a socket arm or the gripper hand on this arm. And then in the elbows, it's got the same adjustable tensioner in the elbows. So you can, you can adjust the elbows here. So that's sim similar advantages. The reason I didn't go with this arm is the same reason that Jeff loves this arm. It's a socket. Yeah. And Jeff convinced me that a socket should not be fitted without a medical professional. Right. It's his feedback. I'm not a professional. It's his feedback. Is that really, if you're doing a socket design, you really should have somebody who knows what they're doing to fit that socket. And he fits it by sort of thermoforming it. Right. And, and I'm like, okay, you know, that's what he says. I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> but, but Jack, if, but now you've got something which is not a socket design, but it's in the, the, the Kwawu. Oh, the Kwawu. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue that if you've got a medical prosthesis in your area, please. Use them. No, no, no. The, the, the point is you backed off of this because of Jeff, but the Kwawu, um, is even less of a socket and yet it is functioning as a socket. It is though. I feel like the Kwawu design, its limitation is how long this um, residual forearm can be. Yeah. Right? You mm -hmm. really want, short. you really want to come down pretty, you don't want a really short, <laughs> you don't want a really short residual. Right. Sure. I, I, right. And whereas if you had a socket, you can get away with a really short residual. That's the advantage of a socket. I see. So you you would you would argue that, I mean, for that matter, you could have a socket with for a really long residual. But at that point, you're saying, yeah. with a long residual, you don't really need a socket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got the Kwawu. I got the Kwawu arm. You know, it's in a way more user adjustable because of all the straps. So if you have a long residual, you'll be okay with a Kwawu arm. If you have a really short residual, you really need a socket. And 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 if you really need a socket, you really should get a medical somebody who, you know, I don't know how medically professional they need to be, but, but, but something. Yeah. Got it. And, and, and so that's why I didn't, and this is really Jeff's idea. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to push it without getting Jeff to say, yeah, go ahead, you know, post it everywhere. You know, I, even though I made it, I designed it as his idea. And, um, and I keep asking him and, and he just doesn't reply. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's one of those, he just doesn't have, time so on, he's on to the next project <laughs> i understand and um but but i think i would come back to this and put a kwawu arm on it because you get something very natural um that also happens to be what there is coming out of limb forge quite often it looks like this with a natural looking hand on it and 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 um so one i could argue that hey you guys should just open up limb forge a little more and let everybody use that um because because I think they'll have a lot more function fit and functionality there when that really gets up to speed. Right. So, so I don't want to come out with this, you know, a month before limb forge is really ready for prime time. Right. Well, Hey, I want to make sure everybody has a chance to uh, get questions in. Um, and Robbie, if you want to follow up more about functionality, um, hopefully there'll be some time at the end to do that. Um, Natalia, do you have any questions that you'd like to throw out? Oh, I think you have us on mute. Oh, yes. There you okay. go. There you go. Um, you mentioned medical prosthesis, a uh, person that you could go to and ask them if they could help with this. Have you found at any point some resistance from people that are trained in to be uh, doing prosthetics? Can you listen to me? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Have you found any resistance in terms of them trying to help you not because they don't want to but because they feel like my job is to be in you know not through uh three printed 3d printing devices but whichever method they do what they train for right 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 so i consciously decided to concentrate on the design side mm -hmm. so very because i felt that's what i could add to the enable movement so i haven't run into that because i'm a designer that's true I'm not really a, somebody who 
delivers um, Pacific partnered with Eric to do that. So Eric, you you deliver, and I'll make them. And have any um, of our other uh, I'll members? come up with designs. Have any of the other folks on the call? Have you guys run into any of those issues as far as pushback from prostheticians? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's ambivalent pushback because they also recognize that we're doing R and D and we're reaching populations that um, the profession hasn't reached. Uh, but yeah, we get that we get that pushback all the time. And there's no question that it's a real concern and uh, and valid, especially when prosthetists are available. Frankly, when prosthetists are available, there's no question it's good to have a prosthetist around. Um, we're we're working that attention. I think the middle ground, which I think we are all moving towards, is to find sympathetic prosthetists, and frankly, they're more sympathetic in the more low resource environments, and to work with them to see if we are providing them with tools that they can now use to provide to more people. We're developing partnerships with medical organizations, Global Health Volunteer Alliance in particular, which has doctors and prosthetists who are using our devices and trying to figure out who they're appropriate for, and then they take medical responsibility. Okay. Uh, I think there's an emerging collaborative middle ground where um, these two ends are keeping each other at arm's length, to coin a phrase, but are in fact learning from each other and collaborating when they can, often unofficially, because there are uh, professional rules and regulations that people have to be careful about. Right. Are you running into that problem, Natalia? Are you getting that kind of thing? Um, not yet, hopefully. But when I met with one of the local kind of uh, one of the um, a local person that has volunteered that has been doing with three D uh, has been working for Enable for some time, he said that um, it would be ideal if we could get a prosthetician involved. And obviously, we we just got approved. We're in that process of just getting started. But just kind of thinking ahead, I'm afraid that that could become an issue and just kind of thinking about how to approach it. But it feels like there might be a happy medium and some people that will be willing to help. And it'll be a lot of trial and error before we make it. But hopefully we won't run into it. But just more of a thought that what to do in the case we do. But sounds like just try until someone that's kind of in the middle of the road and willing to help will be ideal. Right. I guarantee you will run into it um, if you start working with with patients and you know the other thing is to recognize that we really should not be dealing with complicated cases yeah um and frankly saying that in the presence of of a prosthetist the, the word is prosthetist not prosthetician um <laughs> saying it in the presence of a prosthetist is a first step towards building a relationship with a prosthetist i think really the here's a puzzle for you we, I'm confident that there are some people who, for whom volunteer-made devices are really a boon. There are some people who should not be brought within 10, fit, 10 feet of a volunteer device maker. Um, the challenge, which is not quite resolved, is how do you sort those two categories? Right. Because if we could identify the ones that would benefit from what we do and be care and have a good system for avoiding the ones who could potentially be harmed by what we do, mm -hmm. then it gets much easier. We haven't quite figured that one out yet. If our operators are waiting for your call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, just talking with a fair number of prosthetes. Prosthetes. Um, prosthetists. Prosthetists. Um, I get the same sort of feedback, right? Um, cause I, I'll try and call and go, Hey, what, you know, what do you do? What would you like? What would you, you know, so not from a delivery point of view, but what, you know, what would you like? And, and some of them are very recipient, particularly if I would deliver through them, right? Because I don't want to deliver. It's just, I'm an engineer. Then they're like, Oh, well, that's awesome. 
but that's a small majority. I mean, Jeff is one of the very few, <laughs> I think, who are really willing to, to do that. Um, but again, um, 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 so, so, so my point was, my, my direction was twofold. One, my personal choice was to try and meet the need in less resource rich areas. Mm -hmm. So I'm much more interested in modifying my design to meet Raul in Afghanistan than I am to modify my design to meet um, a recipient in California. Not that I don't like the guy in California, or not that I have anything against him, but you got a lot of volunteers in California. You know, have at it, make a great design, modify my design. If you want to modify my design, it's all open source, have at it. Um, but, but, but I think the greater need is for me to make a design that will fulfill um, uh, somebody who doesn't have a prosthesis, prosthetics anywhere near them, right? There's just no chance of them getting one. Right. So giving some basic guidelines of the, uh, along the lines of what John said, you know, my, my first guideline is the further you get up the arm, the more likely you really should get somebody else. That's your, yeah. my basic guideline. Yeah. And then outside of that, it's, well, you know, what does it look like? Does it look really lots of hot spots, lots of whatever you should get somebody else, you know, get somebody involved. Simple guidelines like that can really help. And I try and include those just right in the build instructions, right? I'm not going to build a, a design. I don't think, you know, don't quote me on this. That's shoulder driven. I might. Oh, yeah, Jeff called yeah. up and said, hey, I got this shoulder-driven design. <laughs> I probably would. But, but, um, but I don't know that I would put it sort of on the public enable group because they really are, you know, the further you get up the arm, the more likely you should get somebody uh, else involved, some real medical experience involved. You do raise one other point. Um, I, I'm working towards a collaboration with the VA hospital in, uh, in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, you know, they said basically the prosthetist assumes liability. But the flip side of that is that if the prosthetist thinks that it's safe and appropriate, they are free to use devices no matter where they came from. Yes. Yeah, that is my understanding, too. Yeah. So that's why Jeff is comfortable to use something I send him. Because right, he, so he, he tries to jump on it, and if it still works, then he says, okay, I'll get behind this. Yeah, it's his call. It's, it's his, and that's something to keep in mind. Um, though I don't do deliveries per se, as long as you're giving it away for free, you're not charging anybody for it, you know, don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> well, uh, as long as you're giving it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I won't go to don't worry, you'll be fine. Yeah. Right? And, and you're really trying hard. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. right. Nobody knows, but it is yeah. the case. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this is this is this is almost legal and almost important. Yeah, yeah. Um, if it's upper limb, if it's body powered, not motorized, all of yeah. you, you know, geeks working. There are a lot more ifs. <laughs> um, and if you're giving it away for free, and you do yeah. a good job. What's that? You have to do a good job. If you really, if you really make a terrible device intentionally you could be held liable for that. Well, I'm not even actually quite going to liable yet. All of those things influence liability and you know, ultimately the probability that a jury of your peers <laughs> will put you in jail. And it's never been tested, but those are factors which you can count on yeah. are going to be important. But um, almost legally, what I was gonna say, almost specifically, FDA has said that as long as it's body powered, not charged for, uh, and upper limb, not lower limb. Mm -hmm. They have defined a discretionary category where there are no regulatory requirements. It's all fuzzy, you can all change, but that's sort of this current state of understanding in the United States, yeah, yeah. as far as I know. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Well, thanks, John. That's actually, that's yeah. the best explanation I've heard for it. Cause I think that we get that, we do get that question a lot in terms of, um, you know, where it starts to cross a line. So those guidelines I think are very helpful for everybody, no matter which. Operating in. Thank you. Um, just a real quick time check. I apologize, but my timer came back on. So we're, we're at 10 minutes or maybe even nine minutes in counting something like that. Um, and again, I just want to make sure everybody has a chance to, to ask any questions they might have. 
Um, Cal, oh, he just took off his, his headset. Hey, Cal. I, I do have to jump off. Sorry, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Oh, it's okay. Gary. I have to go. Thanks. So uh, thanks, thanks everybody, and we'll talk next time. Oh, Bye. I have to jump off, too. All right. Well, Cal, did you have any questions before you go? No. All right. Well, glad you made it. Bye. Come back, come back Bye. next time, Cal. We want to hear what you're doing, too. <laughs> I, want to, I want to see with a hand that you made next time. Show it. Oh, I have a finger. Hey, nice one. Are those flexi joints? Those look like flexi joints yeah. to me. Look at that. See, he knows it's 3D <laughs> printing. I still haven't been able to get those printed. Nice job, Cal. <laughs> Bye. Um, all right, I, I have somebody on my screen here um, with the name Brother Robot. Um, and I haven't heard from him yet. Would, would they like to unmute and uh, introduce themselves and ask any questions? It's totally okay to be silent. That's fine as well. Okay. Um, Ryan, so thanks for joining. Long time no talk, huh? Like Hi. <laughs> less than 24 hours. Yeah. Um, so did you have any questions so far, Ryan? Um, well, actually, I'm working with um, this group of farmers here. In, um, well, not here, but uh, in Sacramento. Um, a few of them have lost either multiple fingers on, on, um, on their hands. And I've been looking into, I guess, replacements. Um, and I've, I've been looking into the Nix finger um, model, but um, I was wondering, you know, since there's, there's really only two, I think, on the Enable website, there's the Owen replacement finger and the Nix finger. Um, and I guess, I guess right now I just saw like the flexi finger, but um, that I'm guessing that that's a part of another hand. So that's not really intended for um, just finger. Um, prosthetic. So I was just wondering, are there any other options that um, I could give to these people or? Um, those are the only two I know of. Only two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I haven't tried any of those out either. Um, I, there, there were some ideas I stole from the Nick finger that I liked that I modified the hinges in the Kwawu a little bit um, based mm -hmm. on what he had done. Yeah. That was a pretty clever design. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I was just wondering, um, and I, I guess another um, question um, isn't really to do with um, design, but more like um, outreach. I'm having trouble finding um, somebody here in California. Um, I know there's a lot of people in California that can help me. Um, there's a event that I wanted to attend myself um, with this foundation called the Helping Hand Foundation. And um, they're holding a family event in um, San Ra Rafael, California. And I just want to know, like, um, is there a way to contact people on that Z maps? Um, cause I, I've seen the names of the people that are in the San Rafael area, but like, I have no way to contact them. So what, what is a good way to, I guess, contact individual, um, people that don't make their contact information available? Um, well, you kind of hit it on the head right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, a lot of our volunteers do like their anonymity. So they, you know, mm -hmm. they, they specifically don't put any kind of public facing stuff out there. Um, you know, in the past, Google Plus has been fairly successful. Um, so, you know, you can always put out a, a shout out and let people know what area you're in. Um, I, I know you're familiar with chapters, so you can always reach out to other chapters. They might have members that would even be closer to you, but they were maybe participating with another chapter because you guys just didn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's always, a you know, Ryan, one pattern, which, um, which actually seems to work pretty well, um, is so first of all, on the Z map, you can open up. If you click on one of those links, you may find an email. If you don't, um, frankly, putting out a call into the community. And if there are named people from the map who you're trying to contact, Asking if anyone knows them might cause someone to unearth their email or phone number and send it to you, especially if you give a personal email address rather than invite someone to expose it to the entire community, you might get a hot tip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I think I posted um, on the Google Plus chapter, you know, is it okay for me to like post these six names here? Like, I don't know if that, that's like an invasion of privacy or anything um. if they are names if they're on the z map which is exposed to the public and yeah. and also if they are 
members of the community, which you can check by searching for their names. I really don't see the problem, especially if you yeah. don't encourage people to post the answers directly into the forum. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'll try that out then. It looks like we got a, a new attendee. Um, is that uh, Hanato? Are you there? Hey. Uh, there you go. Hello. Hi. Hello. Um, so we only have a couple of minutes, so I want to make sure you have a chance to, to ask any questions you might have. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, uh, sorry, guys. I have uh, problems uh, coming here, coming home. So uh, I am from Rio. Uh, oh, welcome. Imprimindo vida. Uh, I would say printing life. We are starting now. And I think I, I lost all the, the conversation, but uh, other people may have had uh, the chance to, to talk with you earlier. Yeah, and you I, know, you'll, you'll always be able to watch the video afterwards. Um, oh. Right. And I think I think you and I probably have been talking over email. Um, yes, in the chapters. So uh, yeah, you talked with Claudio. Claudio. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, and so hopefully you got my email. I think the other two chapters in in Brazil are active. Um, so hopefully, if you guys want to connect with them, or if you're not getting a response from them, or something like that, um, I can try and make some introductions for you. Okay. Thank you. We, we are starting now. Um, this last uh, uh, two months, we are studying again and uniting all the guys. Uh, we are, we'll try to uh, to talk with everybody here in Brazil. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Well, um, I, I do apologize for the limitation with this uh, Zoom video conferencing, but we're at two minutes and counting. Um, it feels like we're kind of coming to a natural end, um, but I think we do have, uh, you know, just a few more minutes to go around the room if anybody else has any questions um, before we wrap up for today. I have a quick question and I feel like it's a quick question, but not so much of a quick answer because that seems to be <laughs> the recipient's part of the hand seems to always be recurrent in terms of how do we find recipients. I went on the on the public waiting list and it seems that I was kind of didn't quite understand that it said that um, only um, essentially only pick from this people if you have printed one in the past. Um, and that kind of makes me I don't know if maybe I'm just doing it wrong. But if that is the case, I just wasn't sure how to approach finding new recipients through the enable public list if it is um, if you're starting new yeah, and I see that yeah, we have very yeah. little time, so I don't, I can probably just email you or, um, well, I don't want to, if, if you don't mind, Natalia, I would like to just use say 45 seconds to address that. Yeah. Um, I think there's two things here and then I'll hand it off to John. Um, the first thing though, that I would say is you're right. It, it, it's, it's probably a little bit unfair. Um, I kind of put that guidance up there on that wait list as I, I wanted to make sure that people had enough experience that it, they were going to be able to do it remotely and not have too many false starts. Yeah. So, you know, if you feel confident, then by all means, you know, let's talk and you can take one of the recipients that's, that's up there, if there even is one up there. Okay. But the second part of that is that that public wait list is soon going to be going away um, and to be replaced by a very robust matching system, which will allow a lot more flexibility, hopefully have a lot more recipients and um, some challenging cases, not so challenging. So okay. we might even be as close as a month away on oh, having great. that up and available. And that's really gonna be our golden opportunity to find recipients and, and really awesome. find matches that way. So stay awesome. tuned, we'll definitely keep talking yeah. about that here in this. John, you might have only 30 seconds, but anything you wanna add to that? Yeah, uh, there will also be an influx of um, overseas potential recipients. Okay. So, practice, <laughs> keep in touch. So